The present situation has given us a rare opportunity to showcase some of our hidden pieces. In common with many other museums, we have a collection of artefacts which are not on permanent display. Today we can look at the history behind some of them. The proverb, great oaks from little acorns grow, certainly holds true for one little acorn. It grew into the mighty tree, which became known as the bunyan oak. This copy of a letter dated November 1906, sent by the Vicar of Harlington to the American magnate John Pierpoint Morgan, is now in the Pierpoint Library. He writes, The tree is a handsome large oak. This morning I walked out to measure it, and it is 12 yards in circumference at the root. Given this information, the Wadland Trust believed the tree to have been at least 600 years old at that time. I like to imagine John Bunyan out walking one day in Harlington and spotting this spreading oak, realising its shape was perfect for his purpose. We know he gathered his worshippers at the foot of the tree and used the shape the split trunk as a pulpit. Bunyan Museum and Bunyan Meeting have visitors from across the world. Here we see Minister James Wiley Alexander taking a service of celebration from the old oak. When the tree was felled by the storms of 1987, our little acorn continued its journey. Reverend Stephen Williams commissioned from Mr Tim Jarvis an altar table for the Harlington Church of St Mary the Virgin. In 1988, Professor David Bellamy was invited to plant a new oak sapling to replace the old oak. The blue plaque on the Harlington Heritage Trail commemorates the tree. This lovely vase was also made from a fallen branch. If we turn it over to look at the base, we can see it says, From Harlington Pilgrim Oak, 2004, Stuart King. Stuart King is a craftsman, artist, woodturner and photojournalist. He has a keen interest in the countryside and the traditions that shaped it over the centuries. He's been kind enough to give us his thoughts on our vase. He writes, this hand-turned bud vase was a thank you for the gift of a limb from the ancient tree. The old died in the middle of a field apparently neglected. The vase exhibits some of the trials and tribulations of the oak's slow demise and I believe encapsulates some of the essence of unspoken and unrecorded history. John Bunyan's book, The Pilgrim's Progress, was an immediate success and to date has been published in more than 200 languages. Overseas visitors to the museum are often delighted to find we have the book in their language. He wrote the book as he served his jail sentence for illegal preaching. It was published in 1678. In 1978, to celebrate the 300th anniversary of its publication, this stained glass window designed by Arthur Buss for Goddard and Gibbs was installed in Bunyan Meeting. A range of pottery was also commissioned to mark the occasion. The potter Len Holman remembers it was a very busy time. He says, The pots were very popular and many of our overseas visitors wished to take them home as a souvenir of their visit. They are made from red earthenware clay. This photograph from the 70s shows Len busy in his garden workplace. Len's wife Esther is also a potter. She used this technique of scroffito to inscribe the pots. When the pots were dried to a leather hard state, white slip or liquid clay was poured onto them. They were then decorated with the inscriptions and banding. The designs being scratched through the partially dried slip using a piece of sharpened bamboo to reveal the dark clay underneath. Esther very kindly sent us a sample of the tool she uses for this technique. Len built his own kiln, and we see it here in the background, and fired the pots. He then glazed them with a lead-free version of a traditional honey glaze, and fired them to 1060 degrees. Len and Esther met at Gravesend School of Art in the 1950s. Esther then went on to study pottery at Camberwell School of Art, where she was taught by the world-famous Lucy Ree. After making earthenware for a few years, they started to make high-fired stoneware inspired by Japanese traditions, techniques and glazes. 
I'd like to thank Lynn and Esther Holman and John Thurston of Harlington Heritage Trust and also Stuart King for their help with this film about the history behind some of our museum artefacts.